I did thousands and thousands of commercials over the years that uh, I, I worked in the business, uh, starting in, uh, I guess it was 57 when I first came to, uh, from, from LA where I, was, where I was born and raised. I grew up in New York. But, uh, and that's where I met uh, Vinnie Caffarelli for the first time at uh, UPA Studios where he was an assistant animator. He was just a uh, movie star, beautiful. Back in the 60s, they did one-minute commercials. Can you imagine a one-minute long commercial? It was like doing a feature film. And even a 30-second, of course, was like doing a feature film. Where there was a little, a little clip. We had these flying peanuts. And it goes way back to, to original Walt Disney, where he built a, a multi-plane camera, animation camera, where there was a table, the animation table, and then the camera moves down and in and out. What Disney introduced was, was uh, uh, raising up from there another level of glass, and then on top of that, another level of glass, so you get a feeling of great depth, and the camera could move way down. And so uh, I got together. We all worked on that. And to, to, actually, to build a, a multi-plane camera, I think it was the first time. Everybody would say, oh, you can't do that. But let me, let me see what I can do, you know? It was uh, maddening and... Uh, uh, but uh, it worked, you know, ultimately, and uh, everybody was great. What year was the breakup? Breakup 8182? Yeah. Eventually, Buzzco sold the business to you and Vinny. Instead and of paying a severance. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to meet all these people who worked at that studio. Vinny Bell, uh, Mar uh, Roseang, uh, Marilyn Carrington, and it was fascinating just to hear all these stories of what animation was like back then. Vinny Caffarelli was really my mentor and uh, him passing was really a big blow. You guys would buy like 200 cases of champagne every year. And at about four o'clock, Vinny would say, Timothy, load two, which meant there was a little mini fridge and the freezer was, was all ice, except for two holes that fit champagne bottles perfectly. <laughs> then later, after everyone had gone, he'd say, Timothy, fire two. And he and I would sit down with a pack of cigarettes, a bottle of champagne and say, tonight we learn exposure sheets. Every night, this guy sat down with me to teach me animation on his own time, on his own dime. For me, that was just, I love, I mean, the, the, it never got old. The. I was in the office, but I'd hear this, Jay, Jay, come here, Jay. And this was like once a month. And I'd go over to the door, and he'd say, come here, come here, sit, sit down, sit down. And close the door, close the door. I'd sit down. So, Jay, how long you been with us now? <laughs> That was it. <laughs> Again, a fantastic sense of humor. For me, he was, I mean, truly one of the unforgettable characters in my life. I mean, truly. But he also was this connection. All of a sudden, Vinny, who was an animator and a really great guy and turning me on to all sorts of things. And, uh, but then, you know, he's, he's in a movie. He's in a Robert Downey Sr. movie, you yeah, know? Yeah. And it's in two tons of turquoise tonight. And he takes me to this party, and it's like, this whole other world, I never saw malice in this guy, never saw, there was just a spirit of life that you thought, I'll go with Vinny. <laughs> and he, he was a bridge between the old days in animation yes. and the new days. So, you know, talking about working with these Fleischer, Nick DeFury, and just fantastic gouache, you know, drawings, he had all this stuff, every once in, every once in a while he'd take the stuff out. I never saw him even close to mean or even, I don't think even angry. He just was always. I don't think he was it. really Italian. <laughs>